Hello, this is John Cresswell from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. This is another video in the series on mixed methods research. And today I'd like to talk about the steps in designing a mixed methods study. There are several objectives that I hope to accomplish during this short video. First of all, I want to help you plan or design a mixed methods study. And to do this, we're going to go through 10 steps. These are not all the steps that one would use in designing a study, but they're the major ones. And then uh, what we're going to do is take these steps in an order that would enable you to easily understand how to design a study. It's not going to be the regular logical order of a research project, but then at the end we're going to reorder these to fit the logic of a, t a traditional research project. So assume for a minute that you're sitting in my office and what you, you're coming in with a mixed methods project and what I'm going to do is take you through the steps in designing and planning really a good mixed methods project. And as we go through this, I would ask you to write down on paper or on, in your computer file uh, notes about how you would design your project at each one of these steps. Now, typically this will take us several sessions, and in this short video I'm just going to go through the steps quickly. Uh, in these several sessions we would go through all ten procedures, and we also need to recognize that your plan may change as you begin to think more about your project or actually as you begin to uh, develop the study, uh, the actual study. There are some preliminary considerations I would first talk to you about. And I would ask you if your problem is well suited for mixed methods research. In other words, is it a problem where gathering both quantitative and qualitative data and analyzing them and bringing those, mixing those results together in some way will help you better understand a problem than just doing either quantitative or qualitative research? I'd also talk to you a little bit about the skills that you're bringing. Do you have qualitative research skills? Do you have quantitative research skills? And I'd be especially interested in whether you've read anything about mixed methods research and whether you have looked at some of the recent books or perhaps a journal article or two about mixed methods. So these are all the preliminary considerations we need to think about. And then I will take you through the 10 steps. What we're going to do is we're going to draft a title. I'm going to have you then pose a research problem. I'm going to have you state the general intent or the primary research question. We'll draw a diagram of the different types of data that you'll collect. We'll specify some of the reasons for why you're using mixed methods. We'll consider whether you're going to put a worldview, a philosophy, and a theory into your mixed methods project. We'll define mixed methods research. And then we'll also come up with a design for your procedures and, and how this design might be drawn. We'll then turn to writing a purpose statement or a study aim for your project. And we'll end by specifying the research questions. So those are the 10 steps I'm going to take you through. So let's start with drafting a working title. I start here because this is kind of a benchmark. This is a signpost for your study. And it'll, it will change as you start working on your project, but it's good to set down at least a working title at this point. I want you to keep it short, something less than 10 words. It needs to include the topic that you're studying. You need to identify the participants in the site. I, I would use the words mixed methods to denote what type of methodology you're using. And I'm going to have you pose it as a neutral title that's not tipping either in the quantitative or in the qualitative direction. So quantitative words might be uh, predicting, correlating, relationship, determinants, explaining. Qualitative words might be such as exploring, uh, looking at the meaning, discovering, generating. So we want to stay away from either quantitative or qualitative words 
that might tip it in one direction or another. In other words, create a very neutral title. After you write this title, then I want you to write down the research problem that leads to a need for this study. Now there's problems that are based in the literature and there are problems that are based in practice. You know, there might be a deficiency in existing research literature, so you need to fill a gap. There might be mixed results in the literature. Uh, there may be a need to improve practice or to develop a theory or to improve policy. There may be a need to give voice to underrepresented groups. So we need to think a little bit about the problem and I'd ask you to write a short paragraph that identifies this problem. Next I want you to look at the general intent or it could be even phrased as a general research question you want answered. I would ask you to think about uh, by the end of your study what do you want to have learned and usually by posing that questions and, and thinking about it you can come up with the general intent of your project. It could be a statement, it could be a question and as you write this down on paper and share it with me I would be curious to see how you're phrasing it, whether it's phrased more from a quantitative or a qualitative orientation. This is going to be a tip-off for me as to what design later we might choose, also what you're most comfortable with. It also leads to some questions about your skill level and whether you have skills in both quantitative and qualitative research. So this general intent statement can give me some evidence not only about how we're going to design your mixed methods project, but also the types of skills you bring to the task. The next thing is an easy thing. I'm going to ask you to develop two columns. In the left hand column I want you to list the types of quantitative data that you plan to collect and how you're going to analyze that data. On the right side I want you to list in the column the forms of qualitative data you're going to collect and how you're going to analyze it. Now, the quantitative forms of data really fall into three types. You're gathering data on instruments, you're gathering data through an observational checklist, or you're looking at records such as school attendance records or patient records. On the qualitative side, the types of data tend to be interviews, open-ended interviews, open-ended observations, documents, and audiovisual materials such as photographs or uh, main website pages or uh, text messages of one kind or another. So there's quite a large array of qualitative data types. So just simply listing the, the quantitative data collection analysis and the qualitative data collection analysis. That's the next step. The next part that I want you to think about would be a reason for why you're using mixed methods research. Uh, I've, I think about these in terms of general reasons and more specific reasons. Some of the general reasons would be that either quantitative data or qualitative data by itself really is insufficient to study your problem. Other general reasons Obviously, when you do mixed methods research and you gather both forms of data, you're gathering more data. Some of the uh, students that I work with choose mixed methods research because it's one of the latest methodologies. It's on the cutting edge of doing research. Other people will come to me with the argument that they're doing mixed methods because it's popular in their field and it's being published in their journals. Then we can go to more specific reasons. Why are you doing mixed methods research? Well, one specific reason would be to gather multiple perspectives, different perspectives from quantitative and qualitative research, to really form a more complete understanding of your problem. Perhaps adding qualitative into quantitative helps you contextualize, put into a setting, uh, your information. 
sometimes, especially my colleagues in global health, they want to explore first before they bring in an instrument. So exploring before they try to come up with explanations, that brings quantitative and qualitative together. Other colleagues of mine are doing mixed methods of research to really add to their experiment. They get experimental results, but they don't know why those results were significant. So they follow up with qualitative data. So a quantitative experiment followed by qualitative data. Other people use mixed methods research to evaluate programs where they're gathering both instrument data to assess whether the objectives of the program are being met as well as talking to people. So there are the general reasons and, and specific reasons and I would ask you to write down what are the reasons for why you're using mixed methods research. The next point would be to state your worldview and the theory that you plan to use. Now this gets, the worldview gets us into a little bit of philosophy. Uh, people bring to research, to the research project, a particular worldview, which really consists of a set of beliefs and what they value in terms of research. Well, how do these beliefs develop? Usually through the research communities you're part of, your experience, experiences as a student, your field, your discipline, your networks. And then these in turn would inform a worldview and there are at least four different types, post-positivist, constructivist, transformative, and pragmatist. And each one of these worldviews has di different assumptions. Even import, more important, perhaps, than philosophy would be what theory you're going to bring into your mixed methods project. And these I categorize as either advocacy theories like feminist, racial, ethnic, disability, sexual orientation theories, or perhaps more social science behavioral theories such as a leadership theory, a behavioral change theory, adoption and diffusion theory. What I would ask you to do at this point is to first decide, will you have a theory in your mixed methods project? What is the theory? When was it developed? Who developed it? How has it been used in your field? And perhaps most importantly, how will this theory be inserted into your mixed method study to help shape it. Next, I'll have you write a definition of mixed methods research. I think it's important to have a recent definition. There are a number of books out there on mixed methods research now. Each one might have a slightly different definition. Uh, the way I think about this from one of my books, recent books, would be mixed methods is the collection and analysis of both quantitative and qualitative research and data where the researcher integrates the results, organizes these results and a data collection analysis within a procedure called a mixed methods design and sometimes frames the entire study within a broader theory or a philosophy. The next step is to identify your mixed methods design and to draw a diagram of it. Now the way I think about these designs today is that there are two types. There are the basic designs and the advanced designs. And uh, a researcher needs to begin, I believe, with a basic design. I always say at the heart of every mixed method study is a single basic design you need to think about what that is. Now to get to your basic design there's a series of questions you might ask yourself. Will you bring the results together, merge the results, or have one set of results lead to the second set of results, which I call connecting the quantitative and qualitative. If you're going to merge the two databases you have the basic design called a convergent design. If you're going to connect the two databases, where one builds on the other, one leads to the other, you have 
sequential designs, and there are two types, explanatory and exploratory. And next, I would have you draw a very simple diagram of the design you're going to use. In this picture, you can see the convergent design where the quantitative and qualitative data are being merged together and then an interpretation made. Up on the other side of this slide, you see an explanatory design. That's where you start quantitatively, let's say a survey, come up with the results, and then follow up on those results with qualitative data to help explain the results. That's an explanatory design. An exploratory design just has the reverse of an ex explanatory. You begin qualitatively and explore. Develop something quantitatively that then is tested out with a large number of people. So it's qu qualitative that builds into a quantitative phase. Now, once you think about your project and identify which one of these basic designs is operating, the next question is, are you going to add something to this basic design that would make an advanced design? So for example, are you going to take uh, a, a quantitative explanatory sequential design and frame it within an experiment? So you can see here in the top diagram on the left, I have an experiment, pre and post test with an intervention, typical experimental model. And at the end of that experiment, we'll come up with some outcome results, which will then follow up with qualitative data to help explain some of these outcomes. We may interview a few people. We may conduct some focus groups. So to the basic design, in this case, an explanatory sequential, I've added an experiment, which makes an advanced design. Another idea that you could is that you can add a theory to a basic design, like a social justice theory. You might begin qualitatively and collect data, or begin quantitatively and collect data and build into a qualitative phase, but a different uh, phases of this mixed methods project, there would be a theoretical orientation that guides it. For example, feminist theory might flow into this design. So we have um, an ex exploratory or explanatory sequential design framed by a social justice orientation or a feminist theory. A third type of advanced design is a program evaluation design where we're adding a program evaluation component. So we might first do a explore with a needs assessment, actually develop an instrument, test out the instrument so that we're doing an exploratory sequential design. But that entire design is framed now within an evaluation context where we're trying to look at the success of a particular program and evaluate it. So these advanced designs all add an element to the basic designs. And perhaps you may have an advanced design that you're using. The next step is I'm going to have you craft a purpose statement. Now that we know what the design is, we can put together a, a complete statement about the study aim or the overall purpose of your project. And as you see on the right on this slide, the first sentence talks about the general intent. So recall earlier in one of the steps, we, I had you frame the intent of your study. Then the next sentences get into the type of design you're using. It might be a convergent design. And then the next part of this purpose statement would be the, the quantitative purpose, and then the qualitative purpose, and then it ends with the reasons for mixing data. So here's a script that I've composed for writing a good purpose statement. And all you need to do is fill in your information. And then what I'd have you do in my office is actually write out this paragraph, putting in information from your study, and see how it works for you. 
The final step is I'm going to have you write your research questions. Now in a mixed methods project, there are three types of research questions. Qualitative, quantitative, and a mixed methods question. So at this point in our discussion, I might review how to write a good qualitative research question. It begins with what or how, focuses on a single phenomenon, non-directional language, usually framed as a question, a, a general question, allowing participants' views to emerge. On the other side, we have quantitative research questions, or you might even have hypotheses. So I would get you oriented towards the variables that you are relating, such as independent, dependent, mediating, covariate variables. Uh, these hypotheses or questions would often flow from theory. And I'd have you write these questions or hypotheses in the, the order where the independent variables are at the first of the statement and the dependent variables at the last part of the statement. So there's kind of an order to these variables. Now we turn to the mixed methods question, which you won't find in any research methods book today. This is something that's been developed in the mixed methods literature in just the last couple of years. So what we're going to do here is we're going to match our mixed methods question to the type of design that you're going to use. Let's say you're going to do a convergent design where you are merging your quantitative and qualitative data. The mixed methods question would be to what extent do these two forms of data results converge? An explanatory design might be how do the qualitative data that, that follows up the quantitative part help explain those quantitative results. Exploratory, in what ways do the initial themes in the first qualitative phase of your project, to what extent can those be generalized to a large sample? So you can see here what we're doing is we're writing mixed methods questions that fit the design. An experimental design, how do the qualitative findings help provide an enhanced understanding of the experimental results. Uh, the social justice design, you know, how does the how do the qualitative and quantitative data help understand this uh, theoretical social justice orientation that, that frames the basic design. And then the evaluation design or mixed methods question might be uh, how do the different phases in the project uh, provide an understanding of the overall research goal of the evaluation. So we've come up with these mixed methods questions and they fit the design. So we've gone through 10 steps now. And what I'm going to do now is to reorder those steps in the way that you might see a research project plan put together. It's going to start, of course, with a title and then move to the problem, research problem, and then discuss the worldview or the theory that frames the project, the purpose statement or study aim, and then narrows to uh, from the study aim and the general intent that you're trying to accomplish the research questions, why you're using research, why you're using mixed methods. So now we're getting to the method section, a definition for mixed methods, the types of data that you're going to collect, and we'll end with the mixed methods design and a preliminary diagram of your project. So I believe that if you use this 10-step procedure, you're going to have a good foundation or a plan for a mixed methods project. Follow the steps in the order in which I lay them out initially and then reorder them into the logic of a research project that I mentioned right at the end, and you'll have a good study. I hope you have a successful time in spending time with me in my office and designing your project. Thank you.